The whole 90s was ruled by big boys. It was big boy season. The industry, it was ruled by the likes of Big Pun, Heavy D, E-40, Scarface, and Biggie to name a few. And most songs by these artists, they just talked about having money and girls. But to me, nobody wore the title of a big boy and a ladies man better than Gerald LaVert. Now since you made it this far, go ahead and leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and push that post notification bell to stay up to date with all uploads. Now, without further ado, let's cue that intro. Gerald Edward LeVert was born on July 13, 1966 in Canton, Ohio to Martha and OJ singer Eddie LeVert. He grew up in Shaker Heights, Ohio, which is a suburb outside of Cleveland. Of course, as the oldest Gerald, he traveled with his father on occasion. With the ability to experience the road life of the industry and music being in his genes, it was only a matter of time before he would make his own mark in the industry. In high school, he would form his own music group at the age of 17 with his younger brother and his childhood friend, Mark. The trio, they would be known as LeVert. In the group, they would release seven albums, four of which sold over one million copies going certified gold. These albums was Rope Dope Style, For Real Though, The Big Throwdown, and Just Coolin'. For more information about the group, go ahead and check out the Sean LeVert story. The link will be in the description below. Gerald, he would launch his solo career in 1991, and he began working on his debut album right away. It was released on October 15, 1991, under the title, Private Line. This album debuted at 48 on the Billboard Top 200 charts, number one on the Billboard R&B album charts, and sold over 1 million copies going certified platinum. On September 6, 1994, he released his second album, which peaked at number 18 on the Billboard Top 200 charts and number 2 on the Billboard R&B album charts, selling over 1 million copies, earning him a certified platinum certification. That same year, LeVert, he will appear on a major collaboration group and album called Black Man United, alongside Keith Sweat, Silk, H-Town, and L. DeBarge, among others. Gerald will follow up with a duet album with his father, titled Father and Son. Now this album released on September 26, 1995. This album had peaked at number 20 on the Billboard Top 200 charts, number two on the Billboard R&B album charts, and also going certified gold. Now Gerald, he firmly established himself as one of the most popular R&B artists in the game. Gerald's fourth album, titled Love and Consequences, released on July 21, 1998. It peaked at number 17 on the Billboard 200 charts and number two on the Billboard R&B charts, also selling over 1 million copies, going certified platinum. Now, as I previously stated, Gerald, he was on a roll at this point in his career. He was reach in and use his talent to write songs for other legends like Patti LaBelle, Barry White, and New Edition, to name a few. LeVert, he will also introduce two new groups called Man at Large and One of the Girls. He will also be a mentor to the Rude Boys. During the late 90s, LeVert, he made his debut in acting with an appearance on the Jamie Foxx show in the Parkers. Keith Sweat would capitalize on the idea of having major R&B artists on one album in 1996. But instead of having multiple artists, he would contact Gerald LeVert and Johnny Gill about collaborating on an album. This power trio began working on their debut album, which includes features from major artists like The Locks, Jermaine Dupri, Faith Evans, Missy Elliott, LL Cool J, and Busta Rhymes. On October 14, 1997, the trio, they would release a single, My Body. Now this song peaked at number four on the Billboard Hot 100 charts and number one on the R&B charts, selling over one million copies, earning a platinum certification. On November 11, 1997, the trio debut album was released and it was titled Levert, Sweat, and Gil. This album had peaked at number four on the Billboard Top 200 charts, number two on the Billboard R&B album charts, and also selling over one million copies going certified platinum twice. 
On March 7, 2000, Levert's fifth album was released titled G. This album had peaked at number 8 on the Billboard 200 charts and number 2 on the Billboard R&B album charts, also going certified gold. From 2001 to 2007, Levert, he had four albums that was released titled Gerald's World that reached number six on the Billboard, number two on the Billboard R&B album charts, the G-Spot that peaked at number nine on the Billboard 200 charts, and number two on the Billboard R&B album charts, Stroke of Genius that peaked at number six on the Billboard 200 charts, and number one on the Billboard R&B album charts, and Do I Speak for the World that peaked at number two on the Billboard 200 charts, and number one on the Billboard R&B album charts. Now, as I stated in the beginning of the video, nobody in the world held the title of a ladies man better than Gerald LeVert. His nickname around the industry was Teddy Bear, which is self-explanatory. Around the time when LeVert was 18, he briefly dated 24-year-old singer Mickey Howard for about four years. He also dated Escape member Kenny Burroughs around 2003. He also dated actress Kim Whitley and also had a fling with comedian Monique. Joe LeVert was my first true love. It was at Casanova, he got me with that. Okay. I don't remember how Gerald and I had met because we didn't know each other since we was kids. Um, so living in the same neighborhood, we went to the same high school. So did my parents like it when we got closer? Nope. My mom and dad were like, oh, you can't go out with a musician. You know, you know they just weren't into the music situation. Um, his family was all into music and um, but we remained friends and hung out for many, 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 many years. I say we got married as we got older because when we were younger, Gerald told me one thing. And he said, you can go out to Hollywood and you can pursue your career, but if you want to be with me, I'm gonna let you know there can only be one star in this family. The reason Gerald LaBert and I never got married it's because he died. He died, and that's what he did. He left me here to fend for myself and deal with this life alone. But had Gerald lived, we definitely would've gotten married. Absolutely. Because we were friends. Like, we were friends, and we always talked about we're gonna get married, and we set an age. I think our age was when we were 50. When we turned 50, I said, if you're not married, I'm not married. He was like, we're gonna get married. Yep, we made a little solid bet on it, and we was like, boom. He, he dated a lot of people. Gerald liked women. <laughs> and, you know, I was doing my thing, and I couldn't be like, oh, you, I can't believe you're dating her. Of course, I was young and probably jealous. I, I was, but what are you gonna do? I would say, when you say cause problems, you mean between me and him or me and the women? Let's just say this. I remember when Monique uh, wanted to date Gerald. See, that's one thing people don't know. Monique is a very mature woman, even when she was young. She came up to me, we were somewhere, and then she was like, look, um, I wanna date Jill LeVert. I, um, I know y'all used to date or whatever, but I'm you know, coming to you as a woman to let you know I'm interested. I've never had a woman do that. So I was like, wow, that's like some grown woman stuff right there. Monique, a grown woman. And uh, I gave her my blessing. Even though secretly, I was like, did I do the right thing? On November 10th, 2006, according to an autopsy report, Levert, he had died of a combination of narcotics plus over-the-counter drugs. Some drugs that was in his system was Vicodin, Percocet, and Xanax. Now, while consuming these drugs, he was also having a battle with pneumonia. His death was ruled an accidental homicide. Now, the last pictures leading up to his death, if you pay real close attention to his face, you can see death. Gerald LeVert achieved a great deal. He had two top 20 singles that reached the pop charts and 10 hit singles that peaked in the top 10 of the R&B charts as well as six albums 
that peaked in the top 20 of the top 200 charts and 10 albums that peaked in the top 10 of the R&B charts. Levert, he will receive a BET Music Award in 2007 and an Image Award in 2008 for Best Duo with his father. That same year, he will receive his first Grammy Award for the song and my songs. Now, Gerald, he was one of the best R&B singers from the 90s to the early 2000s. Now, I don't know about y'all, but to me, any big guy who can actually sing always get compared to Gerald Levert. The whole Levert family has an amazing catalog that could go on for decades. Now, as for Eddie, me as a father, I really fell for him. With both of his sons no longer being here anymore, also passing away a few years apart in kinda and similar ways as well. It's just really a sad story when you dig deeper. 